Hey guys, welcome to follow the breadcrumb trail of your joy. This is a very fundamental lesson. It's very crucial. It's very much the essence of empowerment. It is the idea that joy equals that which guides you into more of yourself, into becoming a more empowered version, a more crystallized, a more established, a more embodied version of why you're actually here what you actually came here to be in that sense, what you actually desire to be. So following your joy, why is that a good thing to do? <clears throat> you, you've heard the statement many times, I'm sure. Follow your heart, follow your bliss, follow your excitement, follow your joy. But why is that a good thing to do? Why is that a wise, smart, empowering, um, aligned thing to do? It is precisely because as we've explained in the previous lessons, as we've explored, the idea that the emotional body functions as a guide. So joy, bliss, ecstasy, excitement, inspiration, all these qualities that we feel good about, they feel good precisely because they're guiding us into more of the truth of who we are. So this is why it's actually of uh, a matter of life and death almost, I would say. It's so crucial to being a being, to being an individual expression of the infinite that we actually listen to that heart impulse, that heart's impulse, that inspiration, that joy. So when we follow our joy, <clears throat> what we're doing literally is we're taking advice from our higher selves. We're taking that guidance, we're listening, we're paying attention, we're not being egotistical, we're not being arrogant, we're not being stubborn, we're not feeling betrayed, we're not thinking that we know what is right, what's best, what's not best from our limited physical mind points of view. Instead, we open up, we relax, we take those two to five seconds of relaxation. We check in with ourselves. What truly excites us? What would be the most exciting thing to do today, to, to do right now? What excites me the most right now out of all the things that I can think of? And by acting on your joy in that way, by following your joy in that way, you're literally taking your higher self's advice and guidance. You're literally appreciating that you're part of a bigger plan, part of a bigger, exciting, overarching vision for creation. And then you start to become a conduit, a vessel, an expression of that, more clearly so than you are at present because you've muddied it up with a lot of lack beliefs, a lot of lack ideas. And henceforth, there is the idea of arrogance and stubbornness and you knowing what you think you know. But when you truly open up with true humility and you truly follow your joy with integrity and inspiration, you cannot go wrong. You're only going to accelerate and become more of who you actually are and who you actually desire to be. And your life on all levels of its being will become that much happier, that much more ecstatic. So, you can see that acting on your joy is actually a super wise choice to make. It's the wisest choice at your disposal at any given moment, because it's literally the guidance that is given to you. It's literally the connection, the alignment that is inspired to you. So when you don't act on what seems to be a representation of your true heart's passion and joy, not just your needs, not like security. I need this because then I can feel safe. That's not the type of passion or desire I'm speaking about. I'm speaking about the type of passion or desire that is truly passionate, truly inspired, that is just purely excited about being excited, about being alive, and that wants to express itself in certain ways. Now, the things in your life that seem to attract that type of state of being are those symbols that you gravitate towards, that you think you want and desire. And so when that desire comes up, <clears throat> it is a super wise choice to make, to act on that to the best of your ability, precisely because it comes from a wiser portion of your consciousness that has way more overview of your life. It's like being on the mountaintop instead of in the valley. You can actually see what's going on. You can see all the paths. And so the way that you, with this limited mind-based experience, can tap into it, the closest you can get to higher wisdom is actually to listen to your emotional body signal when it gives off a sense of excitement, joy, elevation, expansion, connection, and to then act on that, to make the most out of that, to squeeze the most out of that, to not out of a needy place, but just because you enjoy being in that space and extracting everything you can out of that experience and acting on it to the fullest of your ability with the least amount of fear that you can bring with you. 
So it's also a wise choice because it will actually support you. I know this is so hard to believe and this is why many people don't start actually following their bliss. This is why they don't empower themselves. Even if they know the mechanics, if you don't trust the process, if you don't trust your joy, if you don't trust where it comes from and where it will lead you, then you're still going to perceive more benefit in the negative approaches, in the controlling approaches. And so you will always go in those negative controlling ways. You will always move in those ways. Whereas if you truly open up, become truly humble, become truly wise and realize that true connection is found, is discovered, is guided to you through joy, through inspiration, through excitement, you start acting on that. And then all of the energy of creation starts to support that journey instead of seemingly contradict you all the time. If contradiction, if opposition, if struggle is all that you're getting, it's simply an immediate reflection of you. It's a reflection of how you are acting, what you are believing is true. And so if you're out of alignment with the truth of your being, if you're not being wise, if you're not being smart about this physical life, if you're not connecting to who you truly are, to your excitement, your passion, then obviously you're going to meet life with a lot of resistance and resistance is going to meet you because that's what you're putting out. That's what you're exuding. That's what you're attracting. That's what you're showing life and life can only reflect you. So it's a super wise choice to act on your joy because it will completely support you. It will completely accelerate you and it will show you and confirm you and prove to you that this is actually how it works. So then people ask how to follow my joy. One of the best analogies I can come up with is the idea of a breadcrumb trail. Why? Because it's not a line. People find it hard to follow their joy consistently. Sure, they can do it for a moment, but to consistently act on their joy, to consistently choose their bliss and to express that and to act that out and to choose the things in life that represent that state of bliss seems like a hard thing to do consistently because people fall into these little traps, these little mind traps of lack. One major one being that it doesn't seem to go anywhere linear, linearly. So when I start acting on my joy, what I notice is the more I act on my joy, the more almost erratic my life becomes, the more chaotic in a sense, not really, but to the linear based conditioned physical mind, it seems like it's going off in all kinds of directions. It's going left then it's going right then it's going up, then it's going backwards even, then it's going down. So there doesn't seem to be a straight line like we learn in school, like our parents teach us to do. Get a job, work for 50 years, then retire, then be happy, then do what you want to do once you're crippled and once you're all like old and crumbly and you can't do the things you want to do anymore, then do that, then start having fun, then start being yourself. So that safe approach obviously looks like a straight line and then our mind can latch onto that and project its happiness at the end of that line, at the end of that trail. However, when we start acting on our joy, something magical happens. We break free from linear reality. We break free from the linear paradigm of space time, quite literally. So what happens is because we amp up our frequency, we start living as higher self lives in a sense, which is very simultaneous, which is very much all over the place at the same time, because time has a very different, different reality to it on those higher vibrational, higher dimensional planes of consciousness. So what we experience in our physical reality, when we start to line up with those higher inspirational energies, that guidance mechanism that bridges us, the emotional body bridging our physical being with our spirit being, with our truth, with our clarity, with our true vision for our life, with the true empowerment for our being, for our physical existence, then our physical existence starts to also resemble that more nonlinear way of being. So you might be really excited about starting a new company, let's say. And so you start this really exciting new company. And for example, a friend of mine just started a, um, a tennis company, his own tennis company, like his tennis coaching company. And he got really excited about that. He was on fire. He was alive. It was super passionate. And so obviously the mind would then go and project that into the future. Oh, this is going to be so amazing. And I'm going to continue to feel like this forever. And it's just going to expand and it's going to take off. And it's so exciting. 
that's amazing be in that state by all means but don't project all those expectations into the future as a normal conditioned physical mind-based being would why because this is when you get into trouble as soon as higher self says basically oh hey wait a second this joy is not to be found here anymore for this period of time it, it's not actually the most direct path into more of yourself for you to continue this business at this time the joy will start to seep out of it it will no longer turn you on as much you will no longer be as excited and so then the mind comes in the conditioned mind comes in that which is based on linear physical sensical reality going from point a to b to c to d to e etc and it starts to object it starts to resist it starts to say hey wait this is not going anywhere well i guess it didn't work out or i guess life betrayed me once again or i guess it was foolish of me to follow my dreams however if you pay attention instead you will notice that as you're starting that company and you're really excited about it you can start to feel at some point it starts to exhaust itself like you've extracted everything there needs to be extracted for you personally out of that symbol of creating a company and at least for this time at least for the time being doesn't mean you'll never pick it up again it simply means the excitement starts to disappear from it and then suddenly if you pay attention and you don't go into oh well let me just go back to my day-to-day -day job then or to my old reality and instead you pay attention and you notice that hey wait a second it really excites me right now to get into rock climbing seemingly rock climbing has nothing to do with playing tennis with coaching tennis it's a sport but that's about it but you start following that joy because you paid attention because you're humbled enough to recognize the guidance you're not insisting that you know what is best for you from a very limited depressed betrayed sense of self you open up, you expand, you trust, you trust the process of your joy, of your excitement, and you start following it like a breadcrumb trail. Again, a breadcrumb trail does not have a straight line. There can be breadcrumb over here, and then one can be over there, and the next one can be over there, and the next one can be in the tree, and the next one can be a mile away. So this keeps you on the edge of your seat in a really good, exciting way, in a way that is very akin, very like how your higher self sees things, sees life, sees events sees time, sees space, sees how creation works. So if you simply start acting on the things that excite you the most, one moment at a time, one moment at a time, one moment at a time, without projecting that it has to go in a certain line and have a certain end goal, but you trust that even if it jumps around from left to right to backwards, and from a linear point of view, those dots seem to be all over the place, if you trust that by the very fact that this moment excites you the most, and then this option excites you the most, and then this action excites you the most, and then this product excites you the most, and then this time to go to bed excites you the most, and then this book to read excites you the most. If you don't try to make sense out of that from a linear point of view, and you trust in that guidance, you trust in your excitement, you trust in your bliss, you will be on the most direct, effortless, most blissful, most joyful path to establishing and manifesting and creating the most of your true frequency self in physical reality. So to empower yourself, you need to also trust yourself. You need to trust your higher self. You need to trust that guidance. You need to give up your insistence. You need to give up your control. You need to really trust in what excites you the most, which is a great gift. It's not a negative thing. Oh, darn it. I'm going to lose my depressive state of control over being really excited moment by moment, being supported with everything that I need moment by moment. That's not a negative thing. It's not a punishment. It's not a scary thing. It's a really, really rewarding process, but you got to trust the process. And you have to follow it like a breadcrumb trail with no expectations of where the next breadcrumb may be. If you can do this, I ensure you, your life will drastically change and empower itself completely without you having to control a single thing. Simply act on what excites you the most, believe in what excites you the most, and work with that, and extract all you can out of those breadcrumbs. Eat those breadcrumbs, enjoy every breadcrumb of it. Don't project where it's leading you. Simply follow it step by step, one moment at a time, one moment at a time, one moment at a time, and you'll be accelerating so fast before you know it that things start changing and transforming, and you can start to see this as evidence in your physical circumstantial life. Also, a side note to that, from our physical mind's point of view, our third dimensional linear time-space point of view, what 
what actually is the straightest line from a spirit point of view may seem like it's all over the place. So if, if we're thinking outside the box for a moment and we're thinking of higher dimensional ways of seeing things, what from a limited dimensional point of view may seem like a path that goes all over the place, from an inter dimensional point of view or from a higher dimensional trans dimensional point of view that may actually seem to be like a straight tunnel straight into the light straight into your goal straight into your purpose straight into your theme straight into who you truly are so what is a straight line from spirit nonlinear point of view may be dropped into physical reality as these little nuggets of excitement and to the physical conditioned mind it may not make any sense but it's still coming from the most immediate direct effortless line and that is why it's wise to follow your excitement and to trust in this guidance principle. So have fun with it. Have fun with it and trust it all the way. Don't stumble, don't, well, you can stumble, but don't fear, don't flinch. Remain in trust of your excitement. What excites you the most in that moment and in that moment, and then go for it in that way. So here's an interesting principle, and you can start to see this operate in your own life, and it has always already operated in a very similar way in your life, but just unconsciously. Let's say, let's just use the hand because you always have this, so you can always use it as an analogy. So let's say at any given moment in your life, you have five options that seem obvious to you. I could go read a book. I could go start my tennis coaching company. I could go and rock climb. I could go to bed or I could uh, take those supplements I'm really excited about. So let's say you have these five options and one of them stands out as the most exciting option. Let's say, let's say this is the most exciting option the highest option in that sense. Then there's an option that is second most exciting. Then there's an option that's third most exciting. Then there's an option that's not really that exciting. And then there's an option that feels like complete total obligation and there's no excitement in that. Not just because you procrastinate or define it as negative, but simply because it really on a gut level, on an energy level, it does not resonate for you. It's not, it doesn't feel good. Right? So there's this full range from the most exciting, the most blissful option to the most depressing option and this being the central, most neutral option. So if you use that as an analogy, what you have been doing already all your life is choose one of these options, usually fairly unconsciously, I might say. So let's say that you choose this option, right? The pretty much the most depressing option, except for this even more depressing option. So when you choose this not so exciting option, but uh, you'll just, you know, go for it, let's do it. Because maybe in the future it will give you freedom. Maybe in the future it will give you joy and happiness if you do this. So you just keep doing this. What happens as soon as you choose this option on a, on a particular, any particular day, out of this option comes, whoop, five new options, right? Five new options flow from this choice that then are represented. They have as their baseline, their center point is of the frequency that this one was of. So then you have a few options above that line and you have a few options below that line of frequency of the, the rate of your vibration, the excitement of your state of being. So what happens if you keep choosing the more depressing option is that the next set of five options become more and more and more depleting. They become more and more not who you are, less and less of who you actually want to be. So it's very crucial that you start choosing at least one of these two highest options, depending on what your belief system can hold. If this is too much for you, this blows your brain. If you cannot imagine just quitting your job and being supported by your passion purely, if you don't believe that is actually true and that can actually happen, then perhaps this is the option for you at that time until you get some practice and you gain some confirmation that this is actually how it works. You gain some trust in the process and then suddenly the most exciting, outrageous option becomes all you're ever gonna want to choose. But let's say for now you're still practicing. So this would be your normal mode of going. In a bad mood, you would choose one of these. In a good mood, you would choose the central one or perhaps this one. So then choose this one, the one that's most exciting to you and still feels actionable to you. You choose this option, the next five set of options, their baseline center frequency will be, will be that of this op option. What this option felt like to you, the baseline of the next five set of options will be of this frequency to you with two options higher than that and two options lower than that in frequency. Now, if you choose the most exciting option, that means that the five options that flow from that will have a baseline frequency of true joy and excitement. And you can take it even further from there, or you can drop it down a little from there if it's too much bliss and you can't handle it. 
So this is a very important principle to remember that the choice you choose right now will lead into a next set of options that is representative, that is in alignment with the choice you just made. So if you want these options to become more and more exciting, you need to consistently, fearlessly, boldly choose your highest joy. So it's very crucial that you start practicing this. Put it to the test, because this is the only way you're gonna live it. This is why you're following this course. It's because you wish to experience yourself from a more heart-based place, from a more blissful, joyful place, from an empowered space of being. You wish to know who you are, um, not in specifics, but in frequency. You wish to feel who you are. You wish to feel connected to the truth of who you are. So one, you gotta test this out. You gotta try it out. You gotta put it to the test. You gotta have to put it into practice. Dedicate yourself to this, to the choose the most exciting option principle I just explained. Follow it like you would a breadcrumb trail with no expectation of where the next breadcrumb will appear, what it will look like. Just purely, oh, this excites me the most. Let me enjoy this moment. And then knowing that as soon as that moment ends, there will be something else that may be most exciting or that may feel the most aligned or the most peaceful. So try this out. Follow the breadcrumb trail of your joy. Two, you will start to see results. This is guaranteed because physical reality cannot help but reflect what you are, what you do, what you choose, okay? So this is a given. You will start to see results. If you consistently follow this for a few days, you will start to feel, experience, see, proof, and results. Step three is a natural result of step two, which is based on the results, you will gain trust. You will gain confidence in this process. When you've absorbed that confidence, when you've completed a cycle of acting on your joy, seeing the results of it, and gaining the trust from it, you have bumped up your baseline frequency that much more, your confidence, your empowerment, your sense of being connected to the universe, the sense that your higher self is taking care of you, that you are guided, that you can act on your highest excitement all the time, and that that does support you completely, and that that is the wisest choice, etc. So you gain trust in this, and this bumps up your frequency level, and bumps up your frequency level, and so you become more and more excited. You become more and more turned on and tapped into life and tuned into who you actually are. And this is so, 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 so worth it. There's no sense in living your life without embodying your individuality completely, without being a vessel of the true vibration that you wish to bring forth, explore more of, and share more of with other beings. So test it out see results, and gain trust. For this lesson's homework, I want you to, I would almost say clear your schedule, but this is sort of more metaphorical than literal. So clear your schedule of all other priorities. Doesn't mean you necessarily are not, you know, doing your job anymore or um, handling the emails that you need to handle for your business or that you're no longer spending time with your family. It doesn't mean literally necessarily clear your schedule. Although if you have an opportunity to do that as well, that's absolutely great and fine and you can do that. But clear your schedule in a sense mentally or energetically or of all other priorities and infuse it with something else. The priority is therefore now to follow your joy, to act on your excitement. So make this your priority for the next six days at least. And so in two days from now, you'll open up the next lesson which will add to this principle of following your joy, the balancing point of understanding integrity, mastering integrity, becoming more familiar with a truer, more aligned, more universal idea of what integrity means. Because often people run into this idea that they cannot follow their joy without sacrificing their integrity. This is not true. But for the next two days, simply practice acting on your joy and see the things that you bump into. If at any point you doubt and you feel like you're about to make a major sacrifice on your integrity, simply don't do it, don't follow your joy until you're clear on that balance. But in any other scenario, take your joy as far as you can take it, meaning that every single moment you ask yourself, this requires devotion, this requires dedication, this is why I say clear your schedule, metaphorically speaking, prioritize following your joy. You do this every moment of every day. You start acting to the best of your ability on the highest possible options so that they lead into new higher options, higher options, higher options. The more diligently, the more committed, the more excited in a way you're doing this, the more awesome the results will be and the more quickly you'll gain that trust and bump up your core frequency. And then so many of your questions and confusions will simply disappear because you will be in an energetic state of connection to your true wiser self 
and you'll always be in alignment with who you are and all the answers will flow from that and all the empowerment you need will flow from that, etc. So for the next two days, try this out in a sense on your own, meaning without further knowledge of integrity and some of the other things we'll get into, but just to try it out like a baby trying out something new, like a kid trying out some new skill, getting used to it, getting used to what it feels like to prioritize joy over the things you think you have to do. So do that for two days, for six days actually, but for the first two days you keep doing that on your own to the best of your present knowledge, just as an experiment. Then I'll give you in the next lesson, I'll give you some, some balancing ideas regarding integrity, how to maintain integrity while you're following your joy. Then two days later again, so after four days from now, once you've implemented some of that integrity knowledge and wisdom and clarity, we'll get into the three day process, which is um, a highlighting or clarifying idea that will show you how the creation process works in our everyday life on a practical level so that you can start to recognize this process while you're acting on your joy and you can start to recognize the challenge in that and then no longer be bogged down by it. So what this does is it avoids that you go back to your old state. That's what most people do. They get excited, but then they feel betrayed. Then they feel let down. Then they feel like it's not possible. Then they go back to their old space of being. In order to avoid this, in order for you to become a snowballing effect, like an accelerating um, uh, powerhouse, basically, of manifesting your life in ever more beautiful, pristine, crystalline ways, you need to understand the process, kind of. You need to understand the process of the three-day process. So after four days, I'll explain that to you. And then after six days, you've practiced it on your own device with your own, the best of your knowledge, like a kid trying out something new. Then you've add, added the balancing point of mastering integrity, or at least understanding more of how integrity works and how it does not have to um, be opposing your joy. In fact, it's a part of your joy, how those two blend together perfectly. And then the idea of the three-day process so that you can always recognize what's happening, how the feedback system of creation works so that you can empower yourself even more. Enjoy. Thank you.